was in the darkroom when I was 11, and I continued to photograph throughout my teenage years. And by the time I was 19, I was really feeling pretty comfortable with the process. So I was in Europe photographing, and while I was in Europe, I said to myself, what can I do when I get back to America that would be incredibly challenging as a photo essay idea to really launch myself into a subject matter and do a very serious set of photographs on that one subject matter. Push me to all limits as my ability as a photographer in terms of my emotions as a young man, the politics, everything. Like what could I really come up with that might be really special and unusual and challenging? Why not do something on the gay community? And I thought more and more about it and the more I thought about it, the more I thought, God, this could really be an interesting set of photographs that would show my ability as a photographer. I think it's important that people know I'm straight and that I'm so angry about the way gay people are treated. And I was angry back then, mostly 69, 70, 71, 72. I wanted to shoot gay people that were completely open about their life. I wanted to photograph male prostitutes. I wanted to photograph in the religious community. Uh, one of the things that angers me more than anything is this assumption that you're a sinner if you're a homosexual. It still, it still absolutely drives me nuts. The drag queens, that whole world, the entertainment part, there was a group of gay drag queens that I photographed up in San Francisco called the Coquettes. They were fantastic. Divine was one of the Coquettes. I just love Anthony's work and I thought it was really important and I love how he mentions that it was such a, it wasn't like some gross and perverted thing that he was doing. It really showed a lot of people that loved each other in a time where it wasn't so acceptable to, to be gay and to be out that were young and in love and doing their thing. This image uh, is one of the more important images in the gay essay. This gentleman is named Reverend Troy Perry. And he then, back in 1970, would perform gay weddings with lesbian couples and, and male couples. And he would do them in this beautiful church that was located near USC campus off of Hoover Street in downtown LA. I got the call early in the morning that his church had been burnt down. I had to convince the firemen that it was so important I got a portrait of him inside the church. I only had like, I don't know, half a minute maybe to do this portrait. And to this day, this has become a very important image in terms of the history of the gay movement. They just trusted me. You know, when you, when you photograph somebody, no matter what their background is, that mutual respect for the subject and the photographer, it's basically there's an implied agreement, like we're gonna create an important image here together. It's not just the photographer shooting the still, but it's also the person being photographed participating in the idea and allowing that image to be created. This photograph is of two hustlers, which are male prostitutes. I'm personally very proud of this picture because of the way it's framed and, and, and it really tells the story, the way that they're looking away to you know, scan who's coming up and down the street, who possibly might you know, give them the signal to jump into their car. I have absolutely crystal clear, vivid memories of being in the moment when the photo was actually taken. There's a series I did of uh, these young kids that were coming to terms with their homosexuality. And it was a dance that was put on by the Gay Community Services Center. I started shooting on the dance floor, but it was so dark. I, so I decided, I'm gonna go into these lounge areas where there was like a 60 watt bulb in the ceiling where they were like kissing each other and kind of making out and talking to one another. And the men would go into the ladies' room and the ladies would go into the men's room. And there were gay couples, lesbians, men, threesomes there. And I was like, oh, this is where I'm gonna take the pictures. The response for the show has been incredible. Anthony has a huge following in Los Angeles. People love his work. You know, there's not a lot of photographers nowadays that actually go and use, you know, make their own silver gelatin prints in their home. I mean, that's to me one of the best things about Anthony is that he actually prints all his own work and that it's silver gelatin, which is such a beautiful way to print and it's becoming a lost art form. I think it was a combination of being, me being genuine and authentic to them and dedicated to my desire to make some really important photographs that 
it worked out. It worked out.